question arises how we decide and how we use HR analytics for the strategic and operational benefit of the organization. Again, uh, we go back to the paper by uh, Rasmussen and Ulrich. In, in that paper, they give a simple schema, three step process, which can help us to use analytics in more effective way. What they suggest is first identify the context. What is my industry context and what is my general marketing context? Who are, how is my industrial environment? How is my general environment? Looking at that context, what is the setting in which we are working that results into our insight about the real uh, challenges in our uh, performance in the organizational performance. Arising from the context comes understanding about the stakeholders. Who are my stakeholders? Customers, employees, suppliers, regulators, natural environment, uh, educational institutions, who all are my stakeholders? And based on that, strategies are identified how we are going to deliver unique values to these stakeholders. Once we know these, once we know the answer of these three questions, then the next set of questions are related to HR analytics, because they indicate what choices do we need to make or what can we discover and test and what data can we collect and analyze because different stakeholders can be managed or for different stakeholders, different types of data will be relevant. For employees, engagement data can be relevant. For the, uh, uh, for the regulators, maybe environment related data might be relevant or uh, tax related data might be relevant. So, uh, after identifying the context, stakeholder and strategies, we need to identify what will be my uniqueness of the value delivery and in order to deliver that value, what are the indicators I should uh, check or I should follow about different stakeholders. And whatever we do with whichever stakeholder, it can be traced back to affecting in some way or other to our HR function. So, Based on this understanding, we need to identify the appropriate HR analytics and I shared with you an exhaustive list of the different HR analytics ratio, different type of metrics available. Out of those, we can choose the most appropriate ones based on these three questions, based on these three uh, aspects and these uh, four questions. We are ending this course as of now with this 20th lecture. So, it is pertinent to reflect at this juncture, what is the future lies in terms of the employees skills required, organizational capabilities required and that in turn, how it is going to impact the HR function. So, based on some of the research conducted and published we can say that disruptions are coming from three broad sets in the current times. First is COVID, second is uh, related to e-commerce and digital transaction and third is about automation and artificial intelligence. COVID has brought major, major disruption. Uh, it accelerated the shift to remote, uh, shift to remote work and virtual meetings. Uh, even after pandemic, people would like to continue with large number of or much higher proportion of the virtual meetings or they will prefer uh, remote working uh, at least few days in a week. So, that is a major uh, trend 
we are going to see in the future. Second big group of trend is related to e-commerce and other digital transactions. Uh, e-commerce we all have seen has increased multifold, the its presence has increased multifold after and during uh, uh, COVID. That has made people familiar to and that has made people sometime habitual to e-commerce and digital transactions. So, these trends continue to increase and that these are going to uh, uh, continue redefining how we do things, how we purchase things, how we consume things. Uh, third major trend is caused due to technological factors related to automation and AI. So, companies are using technology to adapt new realities and planning to implement more technologies in future. So, they are uh, reducing the human interventions, many of the processes are getting automated and these factors are again redefining not only work, but they are redefining the organizations, they are redefining the way organizations interact with employees and consumers. So, based on these three things, three skill sets can be identified, which are going to be the key skill sets to be successful in the future of work. These skill sets are related to lifelong learning aspirations. Technologies keep changing, global globalization and the international trade is regularly fast redefining the business landscape. In this context, we need to be ready to learn new things regularly and proactively. Growth mindset is also a very important uh, skill in this set. Growth mindset is looking at even our failures as opportunity for learning. Uh, we need to be comfortable with the change because change is the only thing inevitable. Creativity, critical thinking and social intelligence, these are another set of the skills of the future, because these are going to redefine the success of individual at workplace and success of organization in the marketplace. More and more work is going to happen with the help of technology, naturally the impact of software, the presence of software is going to only increase in the coming town coming time. So, people have to have the skills on the software design, big data analytics, their familiarity with these things and their comfort in using these things. These are uh, uh, identified as third set of skills of future. In light of these trends and these skill sets required in the future workforce, HR function also need to change. HR also need to be more tax savvy, they need to identify ways of uh, uh, facilitating the flexible working virtual teams, they need to understand how business is going to change thanks to technology and thanks to uh, human genuity. Based on these things, what can make HR successful is defined by six questions as identified in this post podcast of the McKinsey Global Institute. First question is how can you reconfigure the workforce and workplace to increase agility, raise productivity and empower workers while maintaining the culture. Workforce has to be more agile, they have to be more productive and still employees have to be more empowered, the direct control, uh, autocratic management have, are becoming more and more, more things of past. How to maintain the balance in these two things? That is the first question HR need to answer to remain more, to be remain effective in the organization in future. Second question is, are you positioned to leverage technologies and take advantage of long term trends accelerated by them. Are we just followers or chaser, are, are we just chasing the technology or we are proactively using the technology. So, 
for the benefit of business, for the benefit of customers and for the benefit of employees. This proactive use of technology and if required proactive development of technology, choosing the appropriate technology, these are the second set, this is the second set of question, answer to this question will define the success of the HR in future. Third question is, what are we doing to close the skill gaps? We discussed just now that major learning is required, fast learning is required for the individuals as well as for the organizations. HR has to constantly observe how they can close the skill gaps. Are you clearly and transparently communicating your plans and supporting workers in making transitions? In the major changes happening all around, people want to make sense of their place in work and in organization. Also they want to sense their place in the larger knowledge economy, in larger industry. In that context, HR has to regularly, continuously communicate about the uh, organization, about the expectation of the employees and that is a very important factor and that is going to define the effectiveness of HR in future. Uh, third is, are you supporting their lifelong learning? Are you, uh, is HR able to help employees to enhance their competence regularly and build their competence not only for the job in hand, but for the future jobs as well. And if they are able to do it continuously and regularly, that is the fifth question about HR and its success factor in future. Last, uh, what this podcast suggests is, are you leveraging ecosystem partners to increase the effectiveness of these efforts? We need not to look at the suppliers or the uh, customers as the competitors of the organization. They need to be partnered with the organization. Organizations are not, organizations do not exist in isolation. They are always there as part of a social system, of an economic system, of an industrial system. How they can meaningfully and productively build relationship with other stakeholders, with other organizations, even with their competitors is going to define the success of organization in future and success of HR in future will be defined by its ability to help organization to build this ecosystem, to build these productive long lasting association with different stakeholders including, including the competitors to be successful in the market, to, to deliver value to the customers as well as to the social and natural environment.